y'all got in a room and said, how can we piss off the most black people possible? Yeah, let's take one of the only shows that showed them in a good light that ever appeared on TV, and let's destroy it. 1974, Good Times broke new ground by portraying the struggle and the resilience of a black working class family in Chicago. Nearly 50 years later, Netflix's animated reboot causes outrage. It looks like they're gonna tarnish and destroy the legacy of this great institution. See, Good Times, it wasn't just a sitcom. It gave voice and representation to black working class people in America. It told important stories about race, equity, poverty, all through the lens of joy and laughs, and the unbreakable bond of family unity. So when Netflix announced it was gonna launch this reboot, a lot of people were excited, but also kind of pensive. They didn't know what to expect. And then on March 27, when the trailer dropped, oh, people lost their minds. It was like the fat boys just broke up. It was like Run DMC broke up. It's like Method Man left the Wu-Tang. It was bad, okay? People got pissed off. Some see this as the latest in the long line of Hollywood mishandlings of black narratives. Others say, hey, can we just get peace of chance? Regardless of what side of the fence you line up on, it's all good. We gonna have a conversation. My name is Tim Black, and this is Calling It Out. Good Times ran for six years on CBS. From February 1974 to August 1979, created by Monte, Eric Monte, Mike Evans, developed by executive producer Norman Lear. It was television's first time for a black family of two parents to be seen on the screen. And remember, this was just after black exploitation films, where black people were only seen as junkies, dealers, gangsters, thugs, pimps, and sex workers. So yeah, this was a big deal. So that's the legacy of this show. And now we get this trailer for the new reboot. It all started with my grandfather, James Evans. My job is they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. Alright. First, let's look at this cast here. There's a major difference here, man. You know, originally we got the powerhouse of Esther Rowe, John Amos, Jeanette Dubois, Ralph Carter, uh, Michael Evans, Bernadette Stamus, Jimmy Walker. Um, not pitching here. Bookman was also Johnny Brown. Uh, Janet Jackson's out in this picture. But there was, it's not just these, the main cast members. There was also an amazing group of people that came on, black actors, famous black actors that came on, that were part of the ensemble. And now we have the voice actors, the voice acting extravaganza of uh, Yvette Nicole Brown, who's, who I got a lot of issues with. Marseille Martin, Marseille Martin, that was easy. Uh, Jay Furrow. Picture here and JB Smooth. This looks like a hot mess. It just does. It looks like something. This has no connection at all to the original Good Times, other than by name and by Norman Lear and the arrogance of wanting to put this out and switch it up. You know, and and once again, like and and, and just looking at Norman Lear's previous work. And just knowing the history of what happened with Eric Monte, that you know him and Mike Evans put so much work into the creations of these sitcoms, and normally it took all the credit and all the money. And it just seems, and, and I know a lot of people didn't want to call that out when Norman Lear, Norman Lear was here. Now that he's gone, I don't know if people are having that conversation. But I noticed that there are people that are unwilling to even say that this trailer looks like garbage, because it does particularly when you say, when you're comparing it to the original Good Times. I mean, the original Good Times had people with ethics. We had Esther Rowe and John Amos saying, hey, we want positive black characters. We want a, a script that is for adults, 
that encourages, inspires, motivates, and educates the viewers. That's some watered-down BS buffoonery. And they went toe-to-toe with the, with the writers and with the executive producers on that, and it cost John Amos his job. And Esther Rowe even quit a year later after John Amos left, after he was let go, because he was unrelenting. He was, un- he was unwilling to compromise his values, his ethics, to work on this product. Now, we just suppose that type of tenacity, that type of uh, commitment to the art form and to not just the art form, but to your people. And the legacy of what you're putting out into the world. That's what John Amos was on. That's what Esther Rowe was on. You juxtapose that with this. What is this? Look, I know we haven't seen a single episode yet, so who knows exactly where this is going to go. But I'm saying that trailer is supposed to be the best of the best. It's supposed to be you putting your best foot forward. And if this is their best foot forward, I'm scared to see what's going to come next. I mean, you know, I mean, this is horrible. I mean, first of all, the, the, the whole premise of the show is that this is a continuation. Like, these are the grandkids of uh, Florida and James. And it's like, hold on now. They got out of the hood. They left the hood. So now you're saying they're back in the hood. The last of the projects that they're back in the hood. Oh, this is great. Why not just make a new show? I mean, you're gonna make if you're gonna make it so it's no connection at all to the original work, to the source material, to really grab the old audience, right? Why not just go after a new audience with a new type of content? No reason to even bring us into it. I mean, I'm offended that you even put me in this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I grew up watching the reruns, and now you're gonna take my rerun love away and give me this garbage? But you know, that's not even the worst part of it. The worst part of it is there are people that I I see that are afraid to say that this is some hard garbage. They don't even want to say it. I guess they're looking for job opportunities with Netflix. Some of the reviews on TikTok were horrible, like just scared to say, garbage. You can always tell which ones are getting perks from Netflix and who's not. (laughs) Which is part of the problem. See, Esther Rowe, John Amos, they were willing to lose their jobs. John lost his job going to bat for black people, saying, no, I'm not going to let you make me be a buffoon. I don't want this show to turn into some buffoonery. I don't want this show to turn into a stereotype. I want it to be what we envision it to be. And if it's going to be like that, I can't be here. And they were like, okay, you got to go there. And then Esther Rowe was like, well, if you let go of James, then I got to go. So she quit. And that's when the, that's when the ratings really hit the tank. See, because once you take away, once you break up the family, You broke up the family. You know what I'm saying? You broke up what made it special, which is an an apt comparison of really what's going on in America right now. So, and now we got people that aren't willing to take any type of risk. They 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 are not willing to go through any type of hardship, to take less money. They, they throw their, all their ethics and all their integrity out the window just for an opportunity for clicks and views or just for an opportunity to get free tickets to go see the show. And it's just horrible what we got. You know, we, it's horrible. And that's why we are where we are because we can't even, in the artistic realm, say this is not the art we want. The fact that this has been greenlighted with a baby selling dope. Y'all wouldn't have no white kids selling dope. You realize what you're putting out into the world? You realize that? Now, once again, I haven't seen a single episode, but do I have to? Just knowing that Dalvin is a baby drug dealer? It's like Seth MacFarlane and Norman Lear. And I had to say, man, I got to put you there, Steph. You want the money? You, you lined up with him. It seemed like y'all like, Y'all got in a room and said, how can we piss off the most black people possible? Yeah, let's take one of the only shows that showed them in a good light that ever appeared on TV, and let's destroy it. Let's take a crap on it and feed it back to them in the worst form imaginable. That's like, that's what happened here. And I'm not, I'm not cool with it at all, man. 
I'm not cool with it at all. Now, the, the real series, the, the full series comes out April 12th. So, look, we can double back and we can take another look at it. But, folks, and look, and I'm, and I'm prepared to, if I'm wrong, to be wrong and say, hey, I was wrong. This turned out to be totally opposite of what the trailer was. I mean, goodness gracious, thank goodness for that. My bad Netflix, my bad Seth, my bad Steph, you knew exactly what you was doing. Norma Lear, rest in peace. But as of right now, I doubt very highly that I'm going to have any type of walking back of anything. I'm going to have to do any type of making up or have to you know, go another way with this at all. I believe I'm spot on in my commentary. And that is, this is horrible. It's unnecessary. And it's a slap in the face for people who relish it. People, some of you folks are young, you're new to the game, you don't realize. Man, we had black exploitation films in the 70s. I didn't grow up on that. This is what I know. Good times was a big difference in what was being put out there for black folks. Without good times, I don't think you get the Cosby show. You get what I'm saying? <sighs> this is shameful is what it is. It goes to show you they don't they don't care about us and that they can do anything to our image. I, I don't think Norman Lear would have put out an all in the family with Meathead and Archie Bunker, whatever, or strippers or somebody dancing for dollars and making it rain and making it clap and, and, and uh, the white girl selling drugs. Like, I don't think he would have did that. So he'd be like, that can't happen. That's not white culture. See? See what I'm saying? He'd be like, no, I, that's something that something makes sense. It's not, that doesn't make sense at all in white culture. But black culture, yeah, we can have people popping it and dropping it with the wop, and all this can be happening. I know we got some people out here who are just not astute. They can't, their brains don't work. They can't figure this stuff out why this is not a good look. Sometimes you got to look at the OGs and say, maybe the OGs know a little something. Maybe the OGs got this right. Maybe the OGs are right. Maybe I need to sit my young ass down and let the old folks tell me a little something, something. What I'm telling you is we deserve better than this. I would not have such a problem with this if it was put out on its own and let it stand for what it is. Some garbage, ratchetness that people cut their brains off and watch just to not watch something worse. Okay? I get that. But to put it up behind, do you realize there are episodes of the good times that we still recall in our memories? It's like, remember when um, Michael was arguing with his mom because he wanted white Jesus off the wall to put black Jesus up? Remember that episode? You remember the episode where Penny was getting abused? We all found out. We was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Penny's getting abused. And everybody had to have a conversation about abuse in their families. We don't have that anymore. Remember the episode where James went and fought the gang members because they were trying to recruit JJ? They were trying to recruit JJ into the gang. And James was like, y'all not going to get my boy. That's my boy. You ain't going to. And he stood up to the gang. I mean, come on, guys. Come on now. These memories. And if you haven't seen it, you need to go watch some good times and have a good time. But this, I don't know how you make this as good as that. Netflix, all I can say is do us a favor. Respect your audience. Respect the conscious level of your audience. Recognize when you are tapping into something that is historical, that's held in reverence to a certain group of people, and maybe approach it lightly. And if that don't make sense, start treating black folks like you treat white folks. How about that?